Today we are going to see how to use arrays in some real project in Unity so that we don't just learn, you know, the dry facts. We just want to learn something that we're going to use. And today we're creating an app that will show us random face of the dice. So it will simulate the dice throwing and let's get into it. So first I found this image on Pixabay. If you want, you can download it. I left the link below. There is a script for each lesson. And if you open it and open the lesson that we are just talking about, you will get that link and the code script. So you can do it. And I've got this file downloaded already. So let me import it into our project. So just right click in the project window import new asset, and here in downloads I should have it. So once it's imported it is just one file and we have six sides of the dice. This is a good practice to do it this way so that many objects are placed on one image because Unity has a really good tool to separate them. If you click on it and on the right side you've got some properties where you can change those values. And here in sprite mode, there is a single option choose as a default. If you click on it and choose multiple and just apply it, then we can get into the sprite editor where we can slice them. So just press on the slice button and slice it. Unity does a really good job in slicing all the elements. So as you can see, they are sliced in the same way. So now we can apply it and close it. So whenever you click on your image, you can see that we've got six different images now called sprites that we can use for our purpose. So let's create the first object that we will call the dice. So this will be used to display this image. So in order to display the image, we have to add the sprite renderer component to it. So just click on add component and choose sprite renderer. And here we might add some default sprite so we can see how it's placed and how does it look. So just expand it and grab the first one and drop it in that field. Let's just position it in the middle like so. And now we might create some game manager object where we will attach our script. So right click, create empty and call it game manager. Now we are going to create some script. So right click, create and C sharp script and I'll call it game manager. Let's open it. And the first thing we want to do is to create an array that will hold our sprites so we can choose some sprites randomly. So let's do it, get rid of the comments and we have to use a serialized field so we can see this array in the inspector. So just use serialized field and after it we have to specify the array of type sprite because sprites will be held in that array. So just type sprite with capital S and then add square brackets and let's call it maybe dice images. So once we have it, let's go back to Unity and see how it's being displayed. Just click on Game Manager and attach our script to this object. And here you can see we've got our dice images. Click on this arrow and as you can see we've got a size property. We can leave it at zero if you want and just open the image and start dragging and dropping all the images on that field or you can just type the size like six because we're going to have six sprites in it and now we can just click on this icon and just choose every and each of those objects and we've got our array done so let's get back into the code so we can do a bit more stuff we have to display this image and our sprites are being displayed in the sprite renderer component. So we have to make a reference to it. So we do it again like serialized field so that we can just drag and drop this reference in the Unity window. 
and we need to get into the sprite renderer component. So let's type sprite renderer. The name of it might be the same, but with the small letter. So just type sprite renderer. And we want to get those images randomly. So we have to create some random number variable. So let's do it. It will be of type integer. So let's call it random number. We don't have to assign any value to it at the moment as it will be assigned later on. We might do all of those stuff in the start method. And of course we'll call it later on like that, but I want you to create a new method so that all that functionality will be within. So just get rid of the update method as we don't need it and create a new method of type void and let's call it maybe throw the dice like so and add curly brackets and now what do we want to do? We want to get a random number first. So let's type random number and assign random range and we need to provide the minimum and maximum value to it. Our dice is made of some dots. So the it starts from 1 to 6. So we need to get numbers from 1 to 6. So let's put 1 and then we might put 7 because 7 is not included. So the 6 will be the max value. I will show you later on how to change this so it's more dynamic, but let's first make it working and then we will just fix few stuff that we can make it better. Okay, we've got our random number done. So once it's done, we can just pick a sprite from our array. So let's do it. We have to reference the sprite renderer component. So let's type sprite renderer. And now we have to get into that component and use sprite field. So just type sprite. And now we assign some sprite from an array. So just cause dice images, open the square bracket and inside the bracket we need to use this random number to get some index of this array. As you remember, array works on indexes so you have to provide the index. But there is one problem with it because we are choosing the random number from 1 to 6 but indexes start from 0. So in our circumstances, if I open this array, you can see that we've got element of index 0 up to element of index 5. So our numbers are too big. So we have to decrease it by 1 in order to make it working. So now it should be fine because whenever we pick like number 1, there will be an index 0 and the first image will be loaded with one dot on it. So that should be fine. Okay, we've got it done. We can just print this random number just to be sure that we are doing everything fine. I'm using this print statement quite a lot just to debug to, you know, to be sure that my values are correct. So let's just print it, random number. When you will export or build your project, comment out all the print statements because they won't be visible in the game and they will affect your performance. So there is no way of keeping it. But for now it's fine to, to have it. And we have to call our method in the start method. So the new dice will be thrown on the very beginning of our game. So let's call it by the name, throw the dice, add the parentheses and the semicolon at the end. So let's save it and go back to Unity. And now before we press play, you can see that we still need to make a reference to our sprite renderer. It is here, but it says none. So we didn't make that reference. So we have to drag and drop our dice because it's got this component on it and this is the one that need to be changed. So let's save it and press play. Now we've got the number 2 and in our console is number 2 as well so it matches which is very good. So just try again to see if we get different number and we do 4 and 4 which is totally fine 
and one more time maybe we get six no five but still fine so it's okay but now we know that this is working so we have to make some change whenever we are going to use some arrays and specify the max value that will be connected with the array we shouldn't really use like fixed number but instead of that we should provide the property that array offers and there is a really nice property called length that we get how many elements are in that array and based on it we can define the max value of it so whenever the array changes these changes are reflected in every method or every point in your code when wherever you are using it so how to do it we have to get an array name so dice images and now with the dot we are just using length but at the moment we are getting the length which is six and we need to increase it by one in this example in most of the examples we will not have to do it but because here we want to match dots number with our random number so that's why we had to change it so anytime you are using arrays and you are looking for the max value just try to use the array name with the length property and that should provide us with the same result that should be working fine and even we got the six which is lovely but i don't like the way it is now so that we have to just exit and press play again and so on i think that this software should look better if we create a button and whenever we click on that button the new value will be picked so let's just move it up a little bit so that we have some space for the button and let's create the button right click in the hierarchy ui and button we did it before so i will not spend too much time on explaining it i just click on canvas and do some changes that we used to do before so that everything looks much better and i will put full hd in here and i will put the match option 2.5 now let's grab our button use rec tool to change its size maybe like so put it in the middle i'll click on the text and increase the value of it change the text to throw maybe make it bold now we have to click on our button and add this method to it so let's go back and in order to see this method outside of this script we have to make it public so just call it public and because we will use it with our button we don't have to call it in the start method anymore so i just comment it out and go back to unity press on the button once more and go down here on click section we can just click on the plus button and here in that field we are expecting some object that the script is attached to and we've got our game manager object click on no function choose our script which is game manager and here we are looking for throw the dice method just click on it save it we can clear the console and if we press play we've got this first image maybe let's get rid of it so it's not confusing anybody because it wasn't really picked it is here by default so i save it and press play again so you can see there is nothing on the screen and whenever we press throw we get a different values of course not always because this is random so there is a chance that uh, there might be the same number of dots on the next row as well as it was just now and our software is working maybe i will quickly show you how to export it so that you can have your app working and you can share it with your friends so i just click on file build settings and i'm building for mac and linux and so on and we could just press build now but there's something else i want to do you might add some texture like the icon for the game you can click on select 
and here if we had some image you could just press on it I will just pick it because I have no other choice and go back here I want to change to fields I want to change full screen mode to window and I will set our resolution that we used before so full HD and here I want to click on resizable window so we can resize the windows I will just close it you don't have to save it it will be saved automatically and here let's click on the build choose some folder for it and I'll call it maybe throw the dice game open it and select folder and after a couple of seconds or maybe a bit longer because windows projects such a small size that we are building will be built very quickly and here it is and as you can see there is some icon already with the, our dices which is not a great icon at all but I didn't plan on doing it and it just appeared so you might add some better one so that just double click on it and our game sh should be open and now let's just click on throw and as you can see we get our game ready and we are done